So now it's time for the second lab of the day, or the second main lab of the day. And we're now going to have a look at the boot customization. So we're now going to do something to interrupt the boot command so we can go and customize the boot sequence of our MP1 device. The objective of this lab is run a standard U-boot command. So we're going to interrupt the standard U-boot and we're going to run some commands that are available in the U-boot system. Have a look at the different U-boot configurations to show you all the different partitions and everything that are on our memory stick. And that's all we're going to show you in the live part of the lab. As you progress through the rest of the slides of this lab, it shows you how to play around with starting GDB debuggers in TFA and examples of modifications for secure peripheral assignments. So because of time constraints in our day, we're only going up to um, running some standard U-boot commands and uh, modifying something and then showing you the different U-boot configurations. But you've got the slides to carry on to see all the different functions that you have in this U-boot customization section. So really we're going to stop the hands-on at slide number seven. The rest of the slide set will be really for your information so that you can have a play around later on. As with the previous lab, the color coding continues. So the yellow commands are for the host side, blue commands for your target side. And again, the icons in the top left hand corner, theory and practice, are the same as you've seen from the previous example. To get more details of all this U-boot overview and configuration, you can always go to the wiki. So you'll see us advertise this on and off continually through the day. So the wikiest.com. So we should be able to find more information about the U-boot and the commands of U-boot on the wiki. So my first command here says open a terminal on the Linux system. You should already have this open from the previous lab. So the minicom command we entered at the start of the previous lab. So you should already have this open. We will need to reset our target board. And when you see this line here, hit any key to stop auto boot. You need to hit any key. You only have about one to two seconds to do this, so you might miss it on the first time. If not, you'll have to uh, click reset again on your target board using the black button. So if I go back to my screen and make sure I'm active in the correct terminal window. So this is my minicom window that was already open. And if I go reboot, or you can hit the black button as well on your target board. And you have to get ready for this command. There we go. So I've managed to interrupt it at the right time where it says hit any key to stop auto boot. And to prove them there, I'll hit my carriage return two or three times. So I've managed to interrupt my boot sequence now so that we are in a partial configuration of U-Boot. So now at the moment we only have U-Boot standard commands. We don't have the full U-Boot command set. So to see what commands we are, we can hit the help key. So if we go into our terminal window and type help. And all right, it's fairly quick there, but you can see all the different commands that we've got. So we don't have the full list of commands in here. That you can now scroll up and see all the commands that we do have. So now we can go and have a look at our external memory map, which is on our MMC. So if we go MMC part, we can go and examine all the different partitions on our multimedia card. So there you can see we've got seven partitions. Scroll up there. So you can see first stage bootloader partitions one and two, second stage bootloader, then bootfs, rootfs, vendorfs as well as in there, and userfs. And if we want to go and examine in detail one of these partitions, we can see that we want to list with the file structure of extension to MMC partition number four. So this is what this command is going to give us. So if I go back in here, ext2 ls 
MMC zero so there you can now see what's in that particular partition and you can see our device tree blob there for our A7 and our M4 that's visible inside there and right at the top oops, if I scroll up you can see the um, DTBs as well for the discovery kit ones evaluation boards things like that so now we want to set the board to appear as a mass storage device for our host laptop so rather than keep doing everything at the terminal window we can set up our board to be a usb mass storage on our host side this is where you'll need your second usb type c cable so as soon as i type in this command here we will get a countdown here to say that I've got so long to reconnect my second USB cable and then my target board is then halted at that point. So if I go back into here, scroll back to the bottom again. Oops. So UMS 0C0. Please connect to USB cable. So I need my second USB cable now. There we go. And you can now see that all my partitions have come through. So we've got my boot FS partition, my root FS partition, user FS partition, and vendor FS partition have now all become visible inside the device. So now if I go into my host terminal window, I can list the blocks and I'll be able to see all my different partition blocks that are available to me. Go back to my root again. If I go LSBLK. So there you can see all the different partition blocks that we've got inside and the sizes of each of these partitions that we have. So now we can actually do a mount of each of these partitions into the correct area and we can go and have a look at our boot FS. So if we follow each of these commands through individually, you can observe the different contents of different areas of the memory card. So eventually you'll see on the right hand side my terminal window as I go through all these different commands. So I've now mounted all my drives. Now going to look specifically at boot FS. There you can see all the partition labels. And now I can switch to the label boot FS. And there we can see what's actually in our boot FS structure. So you can see there we've got all the different device tree blobs visible and you can see our splash screen. So it's the splash screen that we're going to um, have a look at. We now need to go and change the splash screen. So we need to go to our lab directory and copy a new splash screen across and then synchronize. So we'll follow those commands through. I'm going to change directory to where our splash screen should be located. And I'm now going to copy across the splash screen from our hands-on to our target board. So we're going to change the splash screen now. So it was the ST logo originally, so now it'll be something different. And just like before, we have to do a sync to make sure everything gets refreshed in the system. 
And now because we don't have the full command set, we need to first disconnect our connection. So over here, you can still see that we're connected here. So I have to go back into this terminal window and break the uh, connection of our drives. So control C. So that's now aborted the connection of the USB mass storage controller to the host. And because we don't have the full command set of U-boot, we have to type reset this time. And that will now go and reset my target board. And hopefully you should see that the splash screen has now changed on your target board as it's rebooting. And I'm hoping you should all be able to see a squashed penguin now. as your screen reboots. So that's as far as we go, because that's a modification now of something in U-Boot. Okay, it's only the splash screen that we're modifying, but it means you've actually modified something in U-Boot. The slides now go on to show you lots more features of what you can do inside this lab or boot customization part. You can go and view different environment variables so you can go and see the location of the splash screen. You can go and have a look at the kernel address. You can modify kernel command line information. So you can have a look at that. You can go and edit the add-on boards. So you can play around with the configuration for this particular one is a MEMS shield. So it's a MEMS environmental shield that you can plug in on the Arduino connectors on the bottom side of the board. Again, to playing around with the information for the configuration for the MEM shield. You can modify partition sizes in this section. This one might be of interest to you, depending on what your application is, boot time optimization. So you might want to be able to do boot time and change the speed that things boot up in the target system. And all this information you can get from the wiki so there's a dedicated section on the wiki on how to optimize the boot time so if you want to play around with the boot time then there's a dedicated link on the wiki for that then you go into the gdb debug for the uh, tfa so you can have a play around with debugging the tfa this one shows you how to open an ocd connection via the jtag or your G gdb debug and again this continues through different sections for the uh, debugging side so again, all the GDB commands are available on the wiki. So you can um, get all the information about how to do the GDB debug commands through the, uh, the wiki pages. Then you can set breakpoints, continue to the next breakpoints, have a look at the stack, and finally exit the GDB. And the last section here is the TFA configure the peripheral assignments for the extended trust zone security. So again, we've got device tree configuration for the extended trust zone page on the wiki. And it tells you how to configure it, set up the firewall and possible areas that you want to protect inside the system. So this bit showing you how to configure I squared C number four to be uh, secure as default from the um, reference manual there. And then it tells you how to do it set it into secure mode and U-Boot would freeze while accessing the um, I squared C4 number clock. So there's lots of information in these slides. The most easiest one to show of modifying was the splash screen, but once you're customizing U-Boot and you've interrupted U-Boot, there is a lot you can do at this particular point.